<laughs> Last time we we were talking about we had too many things to talk about, so I did not get to co complete on Raglan's test and Optiodrol and chronic fatigue. So I want to talk to you about <clears throat> first of all chronic fatigue and how it relates to overall all health. So I would like to, you to each take a hand up, take one and pass it around. <clears throat> this diagram, the Dan went back to me. This diagram. Is, it, is this the one you Yeah. That was on top, so. This diagram shows young people, middle-aged people, old people. And how they do when they when they do any kind of exercise. So the, the, this represents age or vitality on the right, on the left, and across the bottom, time, time. So when you first start doing exercise, most people when they very first start will feel a little bit better. They then do whatever you're going to do, whether it be a walk, swim, gym, tease on, whatever you're doing. You get a little, feel better. Then you start to plateau. When you plateau, that's a good thing. But I, I put X's on all three lines. X, X represent, the first X represents when you start to get tired. Did we run out? No, they, they were just in the month of When you start to get tired, that's when you should have heads up, that's like in your car. If you're driving a car and the red lights start blinking, you know you have a problem. Then you go further and you get more tired, more tired, and it starts to go down. When it starts to go down, that's where the second, the second check mark is on the, on the sheets. That's when fatigue starts to set in. You must stop then. If you, if you continue on past fatigue, then you go downhill fast. Now, the, the old coaches say push through it, suck it up, go more. Now, that's for young people. They can go longer, they can push harder, but as you get older, vitality has a tendency to go down some. Partially, partially, only partially because of age, mostly because of chronic low-grade accumulation of other kinds of problems. What are the kinds of problems? I have a list there of some of the symptoms of fatigue. Some people have they have headaches, and, it, and so they take a pill for a headache. Some people have dizziness, or they have strong, sore, sore aching muscles, and they take medications for that, or they try to fix it with a hot bath, or some other kind of therapy, because temporary relief. Where the real, prob the real problem is chronic f fatigue. Now, how do you know if you have chronic fatigue? <clears throat> how do you know if you're going downhill? There's a, there's a test that you can do, and you can do the test at home. It's called Raglan's test. I'm going to explain how to do it. Some of you already know. Could you spell that, Raglan's? R-A-G, R-A-G, Raglan's, L-A-N-D-S. Okay. Raglan's test. It's very simple. You either lie down or sit down for at least two minutes to establish what we will call a ba baseline blood pressure. I recommend you always do it on the same arm. There, there will be a difference, but always do it on the same arm. 
Take the blood pressure, write it down. Don't try to remember it, write it down. You have two numbers, the systolic, that's the high number, and the diastolic, that's the, low, the lower number. The gap between the two should be ideally 40 to 60. If the gap is less than 40, that's an indication that your arteries are tight. They don't have a lot of give and take. You're more likely to have a major problem if they're tight, like a stroke, heart attack. 40 to 60, that's the difference. If they're more than 60, then you have good elasticity in the vessel in the vessels you're safer that becomes important if the blood pressure goes up if, the, if your blood pressure is high then and they have a narrow gap it's more important for you to fix it than it, as if it's high and have a big gap Okay, so you look at that number. Then, to, to complete the Ragnarok test, you then push the button or set the cuff and stand up. The action of standing up is a minor stress, but your body should respond to a minor stress by having the blood pressure elevate. So blood pressure should go up about 10 on the systolic. That way you know that your, your body has reserve energy to deal with minor stress, like standing up, or some kind of mental stress. Both numbers should go up by 10? No. This systolic. We're talking about the top, the, the top number. The top right number. The bottom number, we don't pay too much attention to other than the gap between. We want the top number to go up. That is an indication of the current, the current status of the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are designed to kick in when you need extra power. Yesterday in class we talked about cars. The old cars used to have what they call a passing gear, you know, overdrive. You, you want to pass, you push down, it speeds up for, and then you slow back down when you get around. When the adrenaline gland is, has been overused from excess stress, it can't give you that boost when you stand. And what I do as a guide when I check people, I like to see it go up. If it goes up one or two, that's good. Four or five or six, that's better. 10, that's really good. It will really go much higher than, than 10. If it goes down, then I become concerned. And the more it goes down, the more I know that that person I'm checking is going downhill. They're currently getting worse. And the, the steeper it goes, the faster they're going down, the more they should apply their brakes to slow them down to keep, prevent them from crashing. Now, what happens when you crash? The answer is, it depends. It depends on your condition. If you have a weak heart, it could be heart attack. If you have a weak kidney, it could be a major kidney problem. If you have a low grade chronic bowel or bladder problem, it could be a big flare up, some kind of <coughs> symptom. You're, you're not related to the chronic fatigue. So, what do you do? A simple at home correction to change the, the direction of the, what's going on currently is two things. Number one, more rest. Less time up and around. More time down. Now rest doesn't mean 
sitting, watching TV, or reading a book. Rest means lying in the bed. A lot of old people have nice, comfortable recliner chairs. That's good news, but the bad news is you will never be healthy if you spend a lot of time in a recliner. Why? Because it puts a stretch on the spinal cord. When you stretch the spinal cord, you stimulate nerve flow and, and the forces, energy expenditure, that's, you, you, you don't want to waste. You need to be laying flat, not face down on either side of the back. That's number one. You add, you add time laying down, either resting or sleeping. Sleeping is better. Resting is 80% as effective as sleep, generally. So if you can't sleep, don't sweat it. Lay down. If you still can't sleep, stay down. And, and, and you do it when? When you, when you start to feel, when you start to go down. What time of day is that? It depends. It depends on how much reserve you have. It depends on how to, what, you, what you're doing, what your activity is. A lot of people think the garden is more important than they are. So they, they have, the garden is a big priority, and so they abuse themselves. Sometimes it can be a work project. Sometimes it's even getting a talk ready. It doesn't matter, okay? When, you, when your body needs a rest, it needs a rest. Now, sometimes people say, when I ask, when do you, when do you get tired? I hear things like, oh, about 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> My body just kind of goes down. Well, if, if, your body, if, if your body at 10.30, 11 in the morning becomes sluggish, and what do you typically do? You eat to stimulate. And your body doesn't want food at that time. And what's rest? It's not hypoglycemia. It's it's it's, it's what's to lay down to stop spending energy, conserve, conserve and rebuild. So if you have that dip to go down, drink water, small amounts, four or five ounces, go lay down. Okay, now. What's you, number two? Number two. After rest is take the optic adrenal supplement to nurture and nourish the, uh, the, the gland. The, not, the adrenal gland is small, it rides on the top of the kidneys and it, it kind of holds hands with the kidneys. If, if you're low on water, the body has to work harder. The kidneys have to work harder, so the adrenal gland gets called on more. And you can tell if you're on water very easily by looking at your tongue. Stand from a rear and put your tongue out. If you have waves along, along the side of your tongue, that's an indication that your body is holding water. When your body holds water, it needs more water. Now, it's common, I know this is, creates a discrepancy between what I tell you and what some me medical people tell you. Some medical people will say, oh, you're holding water, you, you need a diuretic. So they give you something to cause you to pee out the water you have, where you really need more water. We talked about that in the discussion we have on the lymphatic system. A lot of people have, think they're fat and they're not, it's just it's an accumulation of lymph fluid. So they, because the lymph is a way to, hold water. So do that. Add, add water, take, have a nap, and support the adrenaline gland with the supplement. What is a, substitute, a good substitute for um, a diuretic then? Or is diuretic okay to take? I don't recommend. I don't think. I don't think I ever recommend diuretics. That's that's a very rare, 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 rare problem. If people hold water, they need water. So I guess if I were to answer your your question, 
What is a good diuretic? Water. Why? Follow, follow me with this thinking. If you need water, it's because your body is too toxic. And what is the, the solution to pollution? Dilution. Dilution. Uh, what do you dilute it with? Water. Water, water is one of the best medicines there is. Drinking it, soaking in it. Okay. So I have one more, one more question. So on the Raglan's test, if we're not raising it close to 10, then we get more rest and we um, take an adrenal supplement. True. What is something we can do if our gap is not between 40 and 60? What's one or two things that we can work on? If the gap is too low, mm -hmm. then I recommend the product BFF. BFS stands for blood flexibility formula, blood vessel flexibility formula. That works very, very quickly. Does like walking or breathing or anything like that also help? I mean, I'm just trying to think. If it's just a supplement that helps the arteries get lower or if there's something Okay. Physically or active, or is rest going to help that at all? Or yeah. okay, if the, if the arteries, are, if the arteries are the the way. they need to be nurtured. They need to be nourished, not cha not challenged. Remember, we talked many many times about tissue tolerance. If the tissue is not capable. Of expanding the contraction, for heaven's <coughs> sake, don't go push it with the walk. You're compounding the problem. Now you could do something, something brief, and maybe pushing it off, pushing it off. If you wanted to, if you wanted to be active, you could do a run, walk, sit, run, walk, sit. Okay, but short term. Can I circle back really quick to the diuretic question? Yes. Because I've had that problem personally in the past where I was holding water, retaining water, whatever, um, and it seemed like the more water I drank, the more I held. Um, and when I added some of the real salt in, it helped my body appropriately use the water that I was taking in. So it kind of helps your body to normalize the water levels without giving you too much salt or too little salt. So in a way, it can act as a diuretic, but it's only in support of what your body <coughs> is already trying to do. Thank you for making that comment. We talked about the fact that real salt helps give power to the DNA. That's a whole, whole other topic. Real salt, the minerals in the real salt power the DNA. And like she said, it helps the body to the salt helps the body do what it's supposed to do. Whether you need more blood pressure or less blood pressure, it helps bring about what's called homeostasis.